Thank you for joining me for this video. Cybersecurity is a topic that I've been covering in a lot of ways through email, through video, through live events, and so forth over the last couple of years. Recently, we've seen a big uptick in cyber events. There have been a lot of attacks. There have been ransomware events. There have been things that we can see that there's just a heightened number of attacks on companies. You, if you've been watching the news, you already know this. Uh, there, there are just all sorts of attacks coming from different ways, different directions. So what I wanted to address in this video is where any holes in your security might be. It's our job to try to present to you a total package to keep you as secure as possible. In the past, that included enterprise-grade antivirus, Windows patching, security patches, third-party patches, all of those things a lot of you already have in place, but unfortunately these days it's not enough. The hackers are getting smarter, they're getting more and more ingenious, and they're coming up with some really crafty ways to uh, either get around these preventative measures or through the use of phishing, steal credentials, it's just a different world than we had even uh, even a year or two ago. So what I did was I created this cybersecurity assessment sheet, and it's got check boxes on it that we're going to go through for your company, so that way you can tell, hey, this is what I do have, and this is working great, and this is where I might be lacking, so you can see where the holes are. I don't want anyone to ever come back to me and say, I wish I would have known, or I thought that was covered. Um, in, again, in the past it was enough, but today we need more. And it's a shame that it's come to that, but that's just the nature of the world that we live in. So what I'd like to do is go over to my desk and we're going to work through this assessment together. I'd like to start with this slide. It's from Sophos, which is a, one of the major antivirus manufacturers, and it says quite a mouthful. It says that traditional antivirus just isn't enough. With recent ransomware attacks, 77% had up-to-date antivirus software. So that just reiterates what I've been saying, that traditional protection just isn't enough. So I actually wanted to take it one step further. I created this test and I ran it against the traditional antivirus. And this was a series of ransomware attacks and so forth, modern threats. And you can see that it failed 16 out of 19 tests. So it just really goes to show that traditional antivirus, although it still has a place, the threats have evolved and we're just in a different world now. So we have to look at more comprehensive measures to try to protect your network. Let's take a look at some attacks that are going on right now. This is what you're seeing on the screen is an attack log for Office 365 for Comtech right here in Graham. Uh, we're a small company like most of you. We're not a bank. We're not a big target. You know, there's, there's nothing really to be had here. And you can see that we're still getting hit with Russia. Uh, there's Kazakhstan. There's, uh, I see Napa, California. Someone's routing through there. I see China. There's Russia. You can see all of this in a very short period of time. So that's why securing all of your network internally and externally is extremely important. These attacks are very, very real. And to determine what is needed, what I did is I created the cybersecurity assessment sheet. This sheet, as well as others, are in your email, and these are customized for you. I have taken the time to look at what your company has in place and I've went through and I've checked the different items that you have in place so you can see visually what you have and what you might not have. So let's go through them real quick. Um, it's important, it's very important that you understand each piece of this because it's like having a secure gate 
on your office. If you don't have all the gates closed, then an intruder can come in. So let's zoom in on this slide. And the first one that I have on here is cybersecurity insurance. You've probably been approached by your insurance agent uh, probably multiple times in the last couple of years about buying cybersecurity insurance. This has become a very real thing. Uh, in the past, I didn't have it myself. I didn't worry about it, but I have since changed my mind. The risk has went up and it now makes perfect sense because so many people are being attacked. The cybersecurity insurance will cover you against things such as ransomware, such as uh, phishing. There's all sorts of fees, legal fees, forensic fees, and so forth that it can cover. So it's worth taking a look at. You cover other parts of your business for fire and liability. Well, cybersecurity is a very real risk, so you should take it seriously. The next item that I have on the list is email protection. And most of you viewing this video have Office 365 through us and through Microsoft, and they do provide a certain degree of anti-spam and antivirus filtering, but it is the traditional antivirus. And you just saw a moment ago how effective that is. Uh, it, it does catch some, but it doesn't catch everything. And so what we recommend is something called ATP. That is Advanced Threat Protection for Office 365. It takes antivirus to the next level. It actually introduces algorithms and artificial intelligence, if you will, that analyzes the emails and opens them up to determine if there are threats in them. If, a say, you receive a PDF file and if that PDF is opened, it tries to run certain scripts or do admin functions on your machine or inject malware, then 365 is going to catch that in the cloud through the ATP protection and stop it so you don't get the attachment and you don't have to make that decision. Or more importantly, your staff member or your employee doesn't have to try to figure out is this malicious or not. So that's one example of what ATP does. Highly effective and I, I definitely recommend it. Another thing that is in the third block that we recommend is actually having a good password policy for your network. Many times we see folks that either don't have password policies, there are very weak password policies, they may be reusing passwords in, on their network. All of those are very bad things. So we wanna make sure that everyone is using complex passwords and that you also have things like lockout policies enabled. A lockout policy helps prevent against what are called brute force attacks. If someone is just trying to hammer your network, trying to get in, trying different passwords, then you want it to lock that account out after, let's say, five incorrect passwords. That way they just can't keep trying them thousands at a time until they get in. So those are the kind of things that we recommend for password policies. The next item on there is computer updates. The Majority of you are on a service plan with us, which we appreciate, and this is one thing that we should be able to cover for everybody. The computer updates are included as part of your service. We put security patches on, we do service packs, we do feature updates, we do uh, also third-party updates such as Adobe, Java, and uh, about a hundred other programs that we push updates out to keep you safe and secure. So that is automatically being done for the vast majority of you. The next item down is the SOC 24-7 monitoring. That may be completely unfamiliar to you and for good reason. That is a security operations center that is watching the network 24-7. And this used to be terribly expensive. Just a couple years ago, it was just beyond what most any small business could even conceive of doing. But there have been great efficiencies made, not only with artificial intelligence, but lots of different things that have brought the cost way, way down. So now, 
it is a viable option and something that we recommend. So what is a security operations center? It is a dedicated team of individuals that their job, their only job, is to watch your network for unusual activity. For example, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and a tunnel opens up to China and data starts flowing through it, that's a red flag. That is something that's going to generate an alert and the SOC can even shut it down so the uh, breach doesn't continue. If, let's say, again, it's in the middle of the night and your scanner or your copier starts trying to run administrative functions on the server, things like that are unusual behavior and it's going to be detected and it's going to be shut down. Those are things that are very, very real threats that happen today. And without a SOC monitoring the network and looking for those particular things, it will never get seen. Those things are not picked up by traditional antivirus and the traditional methods that are out there. So that's why we recommend SOC monitoring. The next item on there is dark web monitoring. The dark web, you've, I'm sure you've heard of it and you've seen my email blast in the past, but just as a quick summary, the dark web is basically a place where the, uh, for lack of a better description, where the bad guys go to buy and sell your data. If a target or someone like that is compromised, the credit card numbers that are stolen go up for sale, and that's where they go is on the dark web. There's also passwords and credentials that get sold, bought and sold on the dark web as well. So what we want to do is monitor the dark web for any of your accounts that might show up there. If your BB&T account, your Amazon account, or whatever might show up on the dark web, I think that's something you want to know about. And that way you can go in, change your passwords, or take whatever steps you need to do to secure the account. So that's why we recommend having dark web monitoring for your company. Security awareness is the next block on the chart here, and security awareness is more or less security training. It is training for you and your staff. The worst thing to happen is someone to get fished or, or get compromised, and they were never trained to recognize what a threat was. And that's what happens, literally, we see in over 95% of the cases. When we run into a breach, typically the customer staff member has clicked on something. They've given their credentials away. They've done something that they shouldn't have done. And yes, we can blame them, but can you really blame someone if you've never trained them as to what a threat even looks like? Well, that's what the security awareness training is. We actually have a program that we're including as part of a bundle here that will train your employees for just a couple of minutes per week, literally. It presents them with a very quick video. It gives them just a couple of questions so you make sure that they actually watched it. And it keeps security forefront in their mind. They'll be able to know what the latest security threats are and hopefully not succumb to them. The next item is lockdown admin controls. And this is basically, think of it as whitelisting for your network. Any programs that are allowed in the network are obviously allowed. You're able to install them, run them, no problem. But if someone wants to go out and install a coupon clipper or a or, or a virus tries to install malware, things of that nature, if it's not on the allowed list, then it's not going to be allowed to be installed. The other things that go along with this are admin, actual admin controls. If I use the example earlier of a scanner trying to run administrative functions on a server, this would block that type of thing. So you can see we're building layers here uh, to give you the protection that you need. And that's really what is necessary. 
because nothing is 100% effective, but by building it in layers, we can create a very, very good defense against these threats. As we move to the bottom of the page, you can see that business class antivirus is, is one of the hot topics, and obviously everybody should have that, and fortunately, everyone should that uh, is watching this video. It's included with our, uh, with all of our security or all of our service plans for that matter. So you should have business class antivirus. This differs from the free antivirus that you run into with uh, McAfee and some others and in that it's managed. When there is an event, we get an alert. If antivirus is not working, we get an alert. If we need to run a full system scan, we can do it with one mouse click. It gives us a lot more visibility than the free antiviruses that are out there, and it does a lot more. The next item is a business class firewall. Most of you also have that in place. If you have a FortiGate firewall in your network closet, then you're covered. And I'm going to mark it on here if you do have one. But what a business class firewall is, is it's one that has a uh, it has filtering built in. Basically, it can do things like content filtering, intrusion protection, malware filtering, antivirus filtering. There's lots of different features that it has. A $49 Linksys router from Office Depot does not have these types of things. They just let anything go through the, through the firewall. You can't even call it a firewall. Uh, it's more or less a router. They let everything pass through it. For your business, you don't want everything passing through. You want control on it. You also want to be able to define things to help protect yourself from, uh, from liability issues, such as if you say, well, we don't allow porn, we don't allow gambling, we don't allow shopping, whatever it is. With a business class firewall, you can actually define those categories and lock down your network even tighter. And that helps keep employees on task as well. The next item on here is multi-factor authentication. And you may not be familiar with the term, but I'm sure you're familiar with the concept. Multi-factor is when you log into, for example, your bank's website, and then they text you or email you a code that you have to type in. It is an additional layer of authentication to prove you are who you say you are when you're trying to log in. And we recommend that for all of your external sites, especially financial sites, banking sites, uh, Office 365 as well. It's highly recommended, and that's why we have it on the list. One interesting point about multi-factor that some folks don't think of is, although it is definitely a preventative or preventative measure to keep bad guys from, from logging into your accounts, it also can be thought of as an alert. If I'm sitting here creating this video and my phone goes off and it says my Wells Fargo account is being accessed, enter the code to continue, well, I know something's up and my password just got compromised, so I can take action on it. So. Think of multi-factor as, uh, as very beneficial in a lot of different ways. It is a, one extra stumbling block you have to work with, but the additional security is well worth it. The last item on this list is backup, and I've grouped that into a section at the bottom of the page, as you can see, because it has several different components. The first one is your main data backup. Typically, this is your server, if you have one at your office, or at least your critical machines uh, that are running things like QuickBooks or CAD or any, any important data. You want to make sure that it is backed up. We typically will set a BDR, we call that our backup and disaster recovery device, at your location, and it will back up your devices on a certain time frame. Typically, servers, we do them every hour during the work week. That's wonderful. 
that's great and it does a fantastic job and it saved many many clients from disaster when uh, when they've been hit with viruses or or had employees accidentally delete folders you name it we can do restores and that's great but there is a risk of only having your backup there at your location. If there is a disaster, let's say there's a fire, there's a lightning strike, uh, the water somehow gets into the server room. We've had that happen before with the roof leak and the equipment gets damaged. Well, if that's where your only backup is, then you're out of luck. You may have just lost all of your data and not have a way to recover. That's why we recommend an off-site backup as well. What we can do is we can send a copy of that data off-site here to our office in Graham. A lot of you already have this. We do it for hundreds of companies, but it sends the data here to our office for safekeeping. So if you do have a disaster on your end, then we can still have a copy of that data and we can restore it and get you back up and running again. Don't let the blink of an eye lightning strike literally put you out of business because it wipes all of your data out in one, in one blast. Office 365 backup is very important as well. And a lot of folks tell me, well, Microsoft's backing up my stuff to the cloud. Why do I need a backup? Well, they're not technically backing up anything. Uh, that's a misconception that a lot of folks have. Just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean it's backed up. Microsoft actually recommends that you have a third-party backup in place in case something bad happens. And here's why. Microsoft has an incredibly robust and stable platform, but it uses what is called replication technology. It is not a backup. That way, they have data centers all over the world and the data is replicated across them. That way, if a hurricane takes out the entire East Coast, no big deal, the data's copied elsewhere, it's gonna, the email's still gonna flow, you can still get to your calendar, you can still get to everything. And that's a great way of working, but it is not a backup. Let's use a real life example. You have an employee that knows it's his last day and he wants to cover his tracks. So he goes into Outlook and he deletes all of his deleted mail. He deletes all of his sent mail, clears out his inbox. He doesn't want you to know that he was sending out your customer list to his next employer. Uh, you know, this kind of stuff happens. Well, as soon as he deletes that, those deletions are mirrored across all of the data centers. There is no restore. There is no backup to restore from. It is a mirror or replication technology. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. Uh, also, there are viruses and so forth and hackers that if they get access to your account, they can go in and delete your data or change your data and you could lose data in that manner. There's lots of ways that this can go, go south on you, unfortunately. And it's not just email anymore. 365 does a lot more than just email. Now folks are storing their files in OneDrive, in SharePoint, and although email's very important, I wouldn't want to get by without mine, uh, my calendar, those files are critically important as well. So we wanna make sure that we have a backup of everything. So that's why we recommend that. This next slide, I put it in there and it, it, there is a copy of this in the email for you, but this is from the NSA, the National Security Agency. And I just wanted you to be aware that the recommendations that I've put together are not just me. Uh, I go to a lot of different trainings, a lot of different vendor trainings, uh, go through certification processes, et cetera, to stay on top of things and, and be as current as I possibly can. But this is 
a guideline from the NSA on how to keep your network secure, the different steps, and you'll find it mirrors what I've got in the assessment. I just wanted you to see how the NSA is even recommending this to help stop attacks, and it doesn't matter if you're a five-user company or if you're Pepsi-Cola. The same principles still apply, so I thought you might find that interesting. As we move on to the solution, we looked at the assessment, so you know where you stand, you can see where your check boxes are. Now we're gonna move on to the actual solution. And we put together a security bundle to make this as easy as we can. This is a deep and complicated subject, so we wanted to try to make it as simple as possible. Let's zoom in on this. And to begin with, on the left side, you'll see we have the essential services. These are the things that you should already have in place. I've been sending email blasts out, having security seminars. We've been, been putting videos out and touting these things right here for the last couple of years for the essential services. And hopefully you already have those in place. The assessment will prove. On the right-hand side, we have the security bundle that is brand new. This is something that we have rolled out to address those holes that are in the assessment. And these are things that just about everybody needs because this is the advanced security measures that we need. And you can see the bullet list of each one. One nice thing that's included with this is cybersecurity insurance. So if you don't have it now, that's okay. This will certainly help. If you do have it, this will help bolster it. And it's at no additional charge. It comes with the security bundle. And the reason we're able to do that is we worked with the, the insurance company and they know that if you have all of these things in place, then you have significantly reduced your risk level. And Therefore, the, the pricing is amazingly low and we can include it as part of this bundle. As a matter of fact, because you are, if you do decide to go with this, then you are covering your bases. You're doing your due diligence. We want to honor that as well. So we're giving you a guarantee that if you do have an event, more or less when you have an event, it's almost inevitable, uh, if you do have an event and we need to do any type of recovery, then the recovery efforts are going to be covered. Anything that might go outside of the cybersecurity insurance in terms of recovery, we will cover for you so you don't have to worry about any out-of-pocket costs, excessive labor, anything like that. Uh, between the cybersecurity insurance and our guarantee, your data recovery costs are going to be covered. We can't talk about cybersecurity without at least mentioning compliance. Compliance is something that uh, everyone needs to pay attention to. It does not just apply to the doctors and the lawyers and the financial consultants anymore. It now reaches out to just about everyone. If you do business with those people that are in the traditionally compliant the business sectors, then you may potentially be liable as well and need to be compliant. Uh, I am not a specialist in compliance. I'll admit that. That's, again, a very, very deep subject. But we have partnered with a compliance agency that can help with this. If that is something you're interested in and would like to know more about being compliant, as there are a lot of rules and a lot of things that are involved with it, uh, the company that we partnered with, they do employee training, they will prepare the documentation, they'll even hold your hand if you are ever audited or have to go through any type of uh, inquiry. So it, we have a very, very good resource for that and we'd love to help you with it if you do need assistance. As we come to the last flyer, this is the bundle itself and the pricing. This is the actual meat of it and the what the cost of the solution is. And I tried to break this down for you as simply as I could. 
And at the top of the page, this section shows you basically the essential services. These are the things, again, that you should hopefully have already had in place. But for those of you that didn't, I wanted to make sure that you had uh, had pricing readily available. Things like off-site backup. If you're not doing off-site right now, it's just 29 cents a gig to send that data off-site. Uh, if you have 100 gigs of data, then that's $29 a month. It's pretty cheap insurance against fire, lightning, etc. We do also offer an archiving service, and that's something that you might want to consider. Archiving is different from backup in that an archive is long-term storage. Think of backup as short-term storage. In other words, if I want to restore my, my QuickBooks file from a few days ago, no problem. That's what the backup's for. We can go back literally, typically months, and do restores of the data. But if I wanted to go back a year ago, two years, three years ago, and recover a file folder, then that's not going to be possible. Backups don't keep images that long, so that's where archiving can come into play. And one real-life example where that could be very important is, let's say you are a printing company and you do graphic design for your clients, and maybe that client only does business with you every three, four years. They just uh, they do a bulk order and they, they don't order very often. Well, those graphic files, if they ever got corrupted or deleted accidentally, that happens, then if you don't notice it within just a few months, then they're gone. Your backups have already purged through and refreshed and you don't have access to that data anymore. We offer a tape backup. I know tape sounds kind of prehistoric, but uh, tape does have a very redeeming quality. Tapes can have up to a 30-year shelf life. So we could take perhaps an annual copy of your data, put it on tape, throw it in a fireproof box, and doesn't matter what happens to that data later, we can always restore it and get you back up and going again. And those client files are right there for you, even if somebody deleted them a year ago. It's not a big deal. Backing up the Office 365 data, that is $4 a mailbox, and that gets everything. That is your mail, your calendar, your contacts, OneDrive, SharePoint, all of that, and it's unlimited storage, so you don't have to worry about ever uh, filling it up. The ATP, Advanced Threat Protection for 365, is only $2 per mailbox. That is the cheapest insurance you are ever going to get or cheapest protection. Uh, that one, again, we have recommended for years now. It makes a world of difference, and for 2 bucks, that is, it can remove a lot of grief, that's for sure. The business class firewalls, again, most of you already have FortiGates, and we offer a managed firewall plan now so you can get new models with the subscription built into the cost so you don't have that big annual fee and you don't have to replace it. We take care of all of that. Those prices start as low as $55, and it's sized based on the size of your network because every firewall is a little different, has different uh, capabilities. And at the bottom of the page, we have the Advanced Security Bundle itself. And this is uh, everything we've been talking about, all bundled together into one low price. And you can see here how amazing the pricing is. If you've ever priced a security operations center, that alone, even just a year ago, was far above what the cost of this entire plan is, and we're giving you all of these different features. So to cover all your bases and fill in all those holes on the assessment sheet, this is a, an incredible bundle. Last of all, I have included in with the email a decline of service letter. And I know that may seem really strange. It's, it's like, wouldn't you want an acceptance letter instead? Well, if you do want to accept these recommendations, simply email me back or hit reply on the email you received and say, let's talk. I want to go through those things with you 
one-on-one -on -one and make sure you totally understand every piece of what we're recommending and the cost. And the cost is going to vary a little bit for some of you because some of you already have a lot of this in place. So adding on may not be that much. Some of you may have very little in place. So you may have to take a lot more steps. So I want to talk with you and go through it. But the reason I included this decline of service letter is if you feel like right now is not a good time for you, that this is not something that you want to proceed with, please just sign that letter, send it back to me. That way I can mark you off the list and say, okay, due diligence is done. They know exactly what they have. They know exactly where the holes are and how to fill it but they decided not to do it at this time. Again, I totally understand this is unusual, well, very unusual times we're in right now, and it may not be the time to take action, but be aware you are open to, you do have risk. You are open and vulnerable right now if you don't take action on these items. And if you make that informed decision, and accept that risk, then that's perfectly fine. I just don't want anyone coming to me at some point and saying, oh, I thought we had this, or I thought we had that. Uh, I want to make sure that it's very, very clear, and that's what that assessment and these recommendations do. So that is basically it. I look forward to hearing from you, and thank you for sitting with me and going through this video. It was a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but this is, as I mentioned, a very complicated product uh, with lots of working pieces, and I want to make sure you understand everything. I'm here for you if you have any questions, so please reach out, and I hope you have a great day.